Okay guys, so we're ready to start a new section of a discrete random variables. Okay, so earlier on we talked about some of the different types of data that uh, that we can be um, interacting with. Uh, so if you've forgotten some of those, go back and watch some of the earlier videos that talks about the differences between categorical data, ordinal, nominal, ratio, numerical. There's a lot of different types of data and it's really important to be able to distinguish each one. So real quick, a discrete random variable are variables where we have to take set steps. So imagine that we are at a car lot, we can buy, or we can, yeah, sure, we'll be a really rich guy at a car lot. We can buy four cars today, we could buy five cars today, or we could buy six cars today. We can't buy four and a half cars at this car lot. They won't let us, uh, you know, only buy half of the car. We have to buy either four, five, or six. They're discrete random data. Now, we've dealt with some discrete random data before. Uh, specifically our dice roll. So when we did that, so we had our sample space, we'll do s equals our sample space of one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so we couldn't roll like a two and a half, we couldn't roll a 4.2. For rolling a single dice, we can only roll one through six. And so we're going to rearrange our uh, how we write this uh, this time. So we're going to use some of the similar data that we've been using before. We're going to still start off with our outcomes. It's going to be this little x. We're going to list all possible outcomes that we have in our discrete random variable. Okay. And this is now it's got a special name. It's called our support. And then over here, we want to say the probability. These are probabilities, but we want to write them out in a specific way. Probability of this capital X equals little x. Or what's the probability that a specific event will be any one of these individual outcomes? Okay, so we can go through and we can assign these. We worked on this. What's the probability of, oh wait, sorry. We are rolling a dice. I'm getting ahead of myself. We have one through six. So the probability of rolling a 1 is 1 divided by 6. Probability of rolling a 2, 1 divided by 6. Anyhow, these are all fair. So we've got 1 divided by 6, 1 divided by 6, 1 divided by 6, and 1 divided by 6. Right, so when the, our probabilities are written like this, directly across from the possible outcomes, this is known as our probability mass function. or it's going to be shorthanded to PMF, probability mass function. Okay, so now we're going to be able to do some interesting things and be able to tweak our probabilities um, and be able to talk about some different scenarios. So let's take the same dice scenario, but let's say that we're playing a, a board game. It's got a unique dice. If you've played lots of board games, you know that there are lots of games with unique dice. And let's get a new sample space. So on this dice, there are going to be three zeros, a one, a two, and a three. It's going to be a dice we're going to use to call for backup for a rating party. And if we roll, if we use zeros, uh, we don't get any help. One, two, or three gives us a set amount of help. Okay, so let's make a new, uh, a new support and a probability mass function for this guy. So once again, we're going to have, so I know this is kind of terrible. This guy goes with this one. This one goes with, jump that over there. Okay, so we've got little x and we have, okay, what are all possible outcomes? We can have zeros, we can have one, two, and three. Okay, so we've got zero, one, two, and three. So even though we're still both rolling a six-sided dice, we've got a different support for this guy. 
So now we need our probabilities of x equaling a specific outcome. And zero, we note that we have three out of a total six uh, possible outcomes in our support. So that gives us a probability of one half. And then we can get a probability of, just like the other one, one sixth, one sixth, and one sixth. Okay, so this is, this is cool. Now we've got these two scenarios, two different dice. We're able to determine the probability of each particular outcome. And uh, in our next video, we're going to talk about uh, how we can take this a step further, how we can learn what is the expected value of a dice roll if we were to roll many, many, many times. We can figure out basically what's the mean of these. We can talk about what's the standard deviation. And we can go on and we'll also talk about uh, the, the CDF or the um, cumulative distribution function.